Hi guys, Anna is here and in this video we're going to be going through the Bohr effect and Clairite shift following from the dissociation curve video. So please grab your paper so you can make your notes as you go along this through this video and let's just jump into it. The only thing I ask in return is please subscribe to my channel, like this video and do let me know in the comments below what's the next video you'd like to see. And before you watch this video, please do watch the video on the dissociation curves because this video then will be much easier for you to understand. Let's jump into it. So we're going to start going through the association curves, just a brief review. So if you guys can draw a big graph, and again on the x-axis we're going to have the partial pressure of oxygen, and then on the y-axis we're going to have percentage saturation of hemoglobin with O2. So basically how many molecules is hemoglobin binding to oxygen at that particular point. And so just remember the dissociation curves, they take the sigmoid shape curve. And we basically can compare different organisms and depending in which environments they live in, the dissociation curve shapes will change. So for example, taking hawk as an example, which is the bird that does a lot of exercise flying up in the sky and being a predator, it will have a hemoglobin with lower affinity for oxygen and so therefore oxygen will be unloaded more readily for respiring tissues and hence this dissociation curve is shifted to the right. On the contrary, there is another organism that actually lives in the environment that is in very low oxygen environment, which is the lugworm. So because it's basically little worms that live on the beach in the sand and due to the tides going up and down, basically resulting in the low oxygen environment. And the way it works, so the curve is going to be shifted to the left compared to the human um, dissociation curve. And basically in this case, hemoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen. So the oxygen will be loaded more readily. And loading means binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. Let's now move to the Bohr effect. Um, Bohr effect basically describes the mechanism of how carbon dioxide affects the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So you guys need to know that CO2 basically has an effect on hemoglobin's affinity and how strongly it will bind to oxygen, which makes sense because actually CO2 is an indirect way of dictating to the body whether the tissues have respired a lot because the CO2 is the byproduct of respiration. And if you guys want to watch any of my respiration videos, they're all uploaded. So please do link, click the link above. So anyway, so let's now separate it. So basically, if the, there could be two environments, high CO2 versus low CO2. And high CO2 environment dictates that the tissues are highly respiring at that particular point, and then low CO2, meaning that tissues are resting and maybe having a lower respiration rate. So high CO2 environment indicates to hemoglobin that it actually needs to release oxygen more readily. So CO2 will result in a conformational change of the shape of the hemoglobin, so it will be unloading oxygen more readily. On the contrary, low CO2 environment indicates to hemoglobin that it might need to hold on to its oxygen, and maybe those particular tissues are not requiring so much oxygen to be released at that particular point of time, so hemoglobin then binds to oxygen more readily, so or it will unload it less readily. And this is basically the idea of how CO2 can change the shape of hemoglobin and make it and change its affinity for oxygen. And we're now going to look at basically at the mechanism of how this actually happens. Okay, so finish these summaries and let's get on to the next topic. These guys represent this Bohr effect on the graph again. So if you could again draw a graph with the x-axis being partial pressure of oxygen and then on the y-axis make it percentage saturation of hemoglobin with O2. So let's have the dark blue curve is going to represent a normal dissociation curve and then if it's shifted to the right 
it will it means this is due to the presence of high CO2 around those tissues. And if that curve shifts to the left, then it means it is indicative of lower CO2 concentration around those particular tissues. So the blue line represents the light blue is that if there are high if there is high CO2, then hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen decreases and then O2 is released more readily. On a contrary, in the low CO2 environment, hemoglobin affinity for oxygen increases and therefore oxygen is released or unloaded less readily. And I'm using in particularly the exam language because you guys always need to say less, more, and make sure to increase to include the hemoglobin affinity um, as a terminology in this case. So this is how we re represent it in the graph. And now we need to go through the mechanism of how this CO2 concentration actually results in the change of the hemoglobin's shape. Okay, so let's look at the two scenarios. So basically, if we have a higher CO2, as we mentioned before, that means that the tissues are highly respiring and this is indicative of a low pH environment. So basically, the lower pH, the more acidic environment it is. If the CO2 is lower instead, then the pH will be higher, so the environment will be more alkali. Now let's see what actually happens inside of the red blood cells and represent this mechanism chemically. So I would recommend drawing a large red blood cell so we can fit all the chemical reactions going on inside. And this is particular example for respiring tissues. So respiring tissues will be releasing CO2 into the plasma, which will then diffuse into the red blood cells and will react with water to make carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. And this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase that you need to know by heart. Furthermore, what happens is the carbonic acid that becomes dissociated into the H plus and the HCO3 minus, which is the hydrogen carbonate ion. H plus indicates and makes the environment more acidic, it lowers the pH. And then what happens, this H plus ion then goes and binds to hemoglobin and makes hemoglobinic acid. So this changes the shape of the hemoglobin and it undergoes the shift where it basically releases the oxygen. So actually this binding of the H plus makes hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen much lower. And which makes sense because the rice spiring tissues are sensing that the oxygen needs to be released on a higher scale. H plus binding to hemoglobin causes conformational change, lowering hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen and releasing oxygen into the surrounding environment. And please note that this is a particular case for respiring tissue, but this reaction will be in reverse if the tissues are resting. So the H plus will not be binding to hemoglobin. So the last subtopic of this video is chloride shift. Um, it's a reaction that basically ensures that the red blood cells keep their water potential. So let's go through it. So again, if you draw the red blood cell and just if we write out the reaction again, so we say, okay, carbonic acid, which is H2CO3, as we know from the previous slide, it dissociates into HCO3 minus and the H plus. So we've gone through the H plus pathway, but we haven't discussed HCO3 minus. So what will happen to this iron is that it will actually diffuse out of the red blood cell meaning that it will increase the water potential of the red blood cell. So to ensure that the red blood cells, they don't change their water potential, the cells and the organisms, they have evolved the process of chloride shift. So for every HCO3 minus that leaves the red blood cell, one single ion of Cl minus will go and enter the red blood cells in order to maintain the same water potential of the red blood cell so it basically doesn't burst by osmosis. Okay guys, I hope you found this video very useful. Um, please press the likes and uh, 
comment in the video below. Tell me what other topics you'd like to see. Happy revision and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.